Hello and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video, we're going to be going through one of the mathematical parts of A-Level Biology, which is the Hardy-Weinberg mathematical model in inheritance. If you are new here, then just click the subscribe button to keep up to date on all the latest biology videos, but also revision tips, and hopefully you find this helpful. And if you do, please give it a thumbs up at the end. Now this video is going to go through two worked examples in detail, so it will be helpful if you do have a pen and paper at the ready. Pause the video so you can actually test yourself and have a go at the questions as we go through. So before we look at the maths part, you need to remind yourself of three key words to really understand what we mean by the Hardy-Weinberg principle. Because this mathematical model is used to predict the allele frequencies within a population. So there's three key words or terms that we need to just recap. Gene pool, population, and allele frequency. So the gene pool is all of the alleles of all the genes within a population at one time. The population is all the individuals of just one species in one area at one time. And the allele frequency, which is of most importance, for Hardy-Weinberg is the proportion of an allele within the gene pool. So within this mathematical model, because it's all to do with proportions, um, your final answer is always going to be either um, a decimal place or a percentage, depending on what the question asks for. So the next thing before, and this is the final thing before the maths, is whether this model is accurate. And that's a really common one or two mark question linked to the math side of this model. And it's all to do with the fact that this mathematical model has many assumptions, which does impede its accuracy. So it assumes that there is no change in the allele frequency from one generation to the next, which isn't going to be the case, which is why it's not perfectly accurate. So the assumptions then that it includes are there must be no migration. So you can't have any individuals migrate in terms of emigration or immigration to remove or add new alleles. There would be no mutations creating new alleles in the gene pool. There's no selection, meaning that none of the alleles for that particular gene have any advantage to survival over the others. So they're all equally advantageous. Mating is random, so individuals are not reproducing with anyone within their family, and it's a large population. So the reality is you will not get a natural population that meets all of those assumptions. So it's not going to be um, completely accurate. However, it is still a really useful mathematical model to give an estimate, which is why it is used. So the formula or the equation is actually two equations that are used and they're used simultaneously. And I've color coded them according to what they are representing. So the top one, which is in red, are representing the genotypes. And there's three possible genotypes individuals could have for one gene. They could either be homozygous dominant, which is represented by P squared. They could be heterozygous, which they're representing as 2PQ, or they could be homozygous recessive, which is Q squared. So you'll always be one of those three genotypes, which is why it equals one in total to represent the whole population. The second equation, P plus Q equals one, is representing the alleles. And again, the alleles that you have available for this gene will either be dominant or recessive, so that's why the total equals one. And P is representing the frequency of the dominant allele. Q is representing the frequency of the recessive allele. So that's how they link together. We're gonna to go through some worked examples now, just so this hopefully makes a bit more sense and you can see how you could be questioned on this. So the worked example that we've got is linked to cystic fibrosis. And we're told that it's caused by a recessive allele. 0.02% of the UK population suffer from cystic fibrosis. And the question is, what proportion of the UK are carriers? Now, you always start with identify which parts of the formula you have values for. 
And if you're new to Hardy Weinberg, I'd recommend whenever you have a go at practice questions, always write out the two formula at the top of your page, but also what each component of the formula represents, because each of the steps will then be much easier if you can look back at your key. When you are more familiar, you won't have to do that every time. So you'll start to remember what the P and the Q represent, and P squared, 2PQ and Q squared. But until you're at that stage, do that every time and you'll start to pick it up much quicker. It's worth noting as well that you will not be given these formula in the AQA exams. You are expected to remember those two formula and what they represent. So the more times you write it down, the stronger your memory of it should be. So we need to work out what we've been given information for. 0.02% of the population have cystic fibrosis. Now, if they are suffering from cystic fibrosis and it's caused by a recessive allele, they must have two copies of the allele to have that phenotype. So their genotype must be homozygous recessive. So that means 0.02% of the population are Q squared. So what we can then go on to do is use that to work out the rest. But first, if Q squared is 0.02%, we do need to do all of the maths as decimals rather than as the percentage. So I'm just going to convert that straight away um, into the decimal. Step two is always work out P and Q. So we already have Q squared and we can use that to work out Q. Then we can use this formula, P plus Q equals 1, to work out P. So let's just go through how. So to work out Q, we need to do the square root of Q squared. And that comes to 0.014. Then we use the P plus Q equals 1 formula. Rearrange it to work out P. And that then means that P is 0.986. So now we have P and we have Q. So we know the frequency of both alleles. And we need to do our step three, which is look back at the question and identify which parts or parts of the formula you're actually being asked to calculate. And in this case, we've been asked what proportion of the UK are carriers. Now, if they're a carrier, that means they have the recessive allele, but they don't have the disease. So they must be heterozygous. So we're being asked to work out 2PQ. You don't actually have to substitute in everything into this formula and then rearrange it to work out 2PQ. You can literally just work out 2PQ by doing 2 times P times Q. And that's what the final step is. 2 times our value for P times our value for Q. And that comes to 0.03 or 3%. Um, if you want to do three significant figures, 2.76%. Now, how you present your final answer depends on what the question says. If it doesn't specify whether it has to be as a decimal or as a percentage, the mark scheme will accept either. If it specifies a percentage, obviously you have to turn it into a percentage. So those are the steps to follow. Let's have a go at another one. So for this one, we're told that a particular species of beetle has a gene coding for the colour and the alleles are red or black. 36% of the population are black and 64% are red. What proportion are heterozygous? Now, within this question, what we haven't actually been told, um, but you would need the information of, red is dominant and black is recessive. So I've just not typed that there, um, but that was in the information. Now for this one, what I suggest is, if you want to, pause the video now, have a go through by yourself, and then watch the worked example. If you're still not feeling confident, watch all the way through with me first anyway. So step one, as we said, is always identify which parts of the formula you have. And this time we've been given two pieces of information, so let's work out what both of them are. Black, as I just said, is recessive. So that means the homozygous recessive genotype, which is Q squared, is 0.36. Red is the dominant phenotype, but there are two genotypes which would give a red beetle. And that would be either heterozygous or homozygous dominant. So that means 64% are P 
p squared plus 2pq. And I've just converted that to the decimal. So this time round, we actually have two different options of what we could use. Step two, though, is always work out P and Q. And from the information we have, it's going to be much easier to work out P and Q if we use the value for Q squared. So that's the one I'm going to use. I'm not going to use any of this information for the red beetles. I'm just going to use the information for the recessive black beetles. So Q squared. First step is square root. So square root 0.36 and that is 0.6. Then we use the P plus Q equals 1 formula. Rearrange it to work out P. So P is 0.4. Step 3, we need to identify which parts of the formula we are being asked to work out. And this time they've just said, what proportion of heterozygous? So heterozygous is 2PQ which actually is the same as the example we did previously. It won't always be heterozygous they're asking you to work out. They could ask you to work out the um, dominant allele frequency, the frequency of the recessive allele. They could ask homozygous dominant. They could ask any component. It just so happens the two I've gone for are heterozygous. So again, as I said, you don't need to rearrange all this formula. You can jump straight to working out what 2PQ is by doing 2 times P times Q. And in this case, that comes to 0.48, or if you were asked to represent it as a percentage, 48% are heterozygous. So just in summary then of the approach to take when you are doing Hardy-Weinberg equations questions, always start by writing out the two formula. That is a good start point just to make sure you don't slip up, but sometimes they will give you a mark if you just identify the formula and say which bit you need to calculate. When you're in the early stages of practice, do write out this each time so you know what P, Q and all the other components are. And then it's following these steps. Always step one, identify what information you have been given. Then you work out P and Q. Then you look back at the question to see what you're actually being asked to identify, and then you work that out. And that's not always going to be 2PQ. It was for the two examples we had, but it could be you're then working out Q squared or P squared um, and so on. So in summary, Hardy-Weinberg principle is a mathematical model and it's used to predict allele frequencies. It assumes that there is no change in the allele frequency though, so it's not completely accurate. It's two equations to use simultaneously, and that's what we've just gone through. So if you do want to have a go at more practice questions of Hardy-Weinberg, head over to missestrick.com and it's within the topic seven booklets that you'll find um, examples to practice. I hope you have found this helpful today, and if you have, please give it a thumbs up.